right, I'm going to call the meeting to order. This is the um, Wednesday, August 27th, 5.30 p.m. meeting of uh, the executive committee. And um, I wanted to, so I want to talk about the superintendent search and I was going to move this to the end, um, but I think um, a lot of the items on here are kind of deciding where they're going to go. <laughs> So I don't know that we need to necessarily have the discussion, um, you know, so I'm not going to ask uh, Jim to leave um, unless you want to go further and then we'll plug it at the bottom. But one of the things we need to start talking about is um, where we go from here. Um, you know, I know that the timeline that we were given in the past was that we should start doing interviews as of January. Um, and so I want to make sure that you know, we have that set up, we have a firm set up, um, you know, how do we want to go about doing that? So do we want, um, we could add that as a closed session item um, to our board meeting and and do it that way, or um, we could do, uh, if we want to just uh, talk about it at a committee, um, you know, we could do a closed session committee here um, at another time, um, just kind of looking for thoughts, ideas of what you guys thought might be best to do. Yes. So I guess given the um, superintendent search process, are there preliminary things for uh, community engagement and things like that, benchmarks that we would want to be seeing before January, I guess you could say? Well, so what, what I'm proposing is we need to start with um, are we going to hire a firm? Are we going to put up a um, just our own um, HR? We're looking for somebody and we need to go back to that process. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're not even there yet for what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay, good. I want I mean, to make sure that. It's a matter of um, you know, looking mm -hmm. into either, either a committee looks at it and says, this is what we want to bring forward to the full board or we have the meeting um, in closed session where we discuss what we want to do uh, and, and then move forward from there. I guess, um, well, let's have the discussion. I'm always all about discussions. Let's have a discussion at the next board meeting. Let's go right in closed session and, and discuss, see kind of what everybody sits in and have uh, have a discussion. And we'll make some directives from there. Yeah, I think uh, at least if, as long as we're having a discussion, doesn't mean that anything specific is even happening. It's just having the discussion to get everybody involved and, and allow them to weigh in on how they would like to proceed. Right. My only concern with the next meeting is I'll be virtual. Okay. So, I mean, we've done that before, yeah. but that's kind of awkward. So that would be up to you and the timing of it. Well, do you think that would be, we could do it in a special meeting too, I guess. Um, are we protest are we anticipating possibly having a special meeting um, uh, for the the next I mean the next month? Uh, we currently have uh yes September I would. or this month we would have a, a special meeting. Possibly. Right, which is next that's next, 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 Tuesday. That's next Tuesday. Yeah. So and that's the one you're going to be. Strategic plan. September. We're going to have special meetings, you know, throughout the next mm -hmm. six months. Right. So we could probably just, I mean, if we don't, if we can't get it, because I, I understand the awkwardness and all that, and, and you know, it's totally up to you guys. I mean, I can do it either way, but I'm just thinking it might be better in person. But that's up to you. It doesn't. Well, we can tack it on to the general meeting. The first time we yeah. in September. Yep, that would make sense. Okay, but I'm good with that. All right. All right. Yeah. Let's just yeah. let's let's do that then. So, um, we'll put that on the agenda as an item to talk about with the full board. Yeah. Does that make sense, Lori? Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Sorry. Okay. Great. Um. So, uh, the next item on here is governments, governments committees, and um, flow of information. Mm -hmm. So I know that we just a second. Did that thing just beep? Yeah. And why? I know. I just want to make sure that something didn't, <laughs> given our history of. What was it? It asked if you're still on the call or not. Okay. We're still recording. 
Uh, so, um, so the committees and flow of information. And so, um, I'm going to grab this book from you. This one? Yeah. All right. Uh, no, I'm sorry. The, the, the black, black one. All right. Yeah. So, um, Jimmy, you want to talk a little bit about sure. this? Sure. I, I would just, uh, you know, as I've, you know, again, being hired in this in our own role, it's, it's to really tee us up for success and get things for the next superintendent and to get things moving. And one of the things that I'm paying attention to also is the governance model, which which uh, I believe that you are you move to and, and working, uh, and that is where uh, all your work really starts being done in the committee coming to the full board. This book really supports that. Uh, and so I thought that this really oh, provides, you know, good support of, for what you're attempting to do. It, it also suggests that you might even can, you know, so standing committees, they think are very important. They think the board should be uh, deeply involved in the work with administration you know, in this committees and then the committee chairs are really uh, kind of owning this work with the support, obviously, of administration uh, going to the full board because that's your that's your board meeting and that's when you're conducting business. And and yet much of that detail is being worked out and and looked at, you know, in committees where a lot of that grunt work is, you know, taking place. And then you're bringing evidence forward in terms of why you would be recommending or updating the full board on so I think this book supports that. So I thought it would be beneficial. The other thing though it suggests, and I've talked with with Stacy on this a little bit, and um, uh, it suggests even a um, so while it strongly supports the standing committees and, and the importance of board being coming involved and in owning their their meetings, you know, by starting that through the committees, it also suggests uh, consideration for a a, a different uh, committee uh, different committees to replace the ones you have, suggesting that the ones that you're currently working are silos, uh, and and you don't really get good systems thinking. So this suggests, you know, rather than a finance committee and being operational, there be governance, you know. And so there are some different models. I don't know that you need to really make a quick change on that. That you know you could stay with your existing structures as you try to digest this, um, and and that, that I mean not that you couldn't. Uh, but you want, don't want to do anything hastily, uh, and it's got to be meaningful. And then whether or not we can do this on our own, or whether or not you need assistance in terms of you know how do you make these adjustments into a new model. Uh, but I, but I think this reinforces what I believe you're uh, wanting to do, and and to really have a good governance structure. And so then the question would be: Does does this group here want to kind of go through the book? You know, take on so many chapters and. You kind of share your thoughts on that in terms of yeah this is reinforcing where we want to go i just learned something or i'm not sure that i agree with this but you can kind of go through that and uh, then it also will get to chapter eight which talks about you know the, the restructuring the restructuring actually into changing your committees from a finance to you know a finance would fit into a different committee as well as other items okay okay to me it, it made a lot of sense this was introduced to me you know when i was doing some um Board training at, at my last district, uh, and I've read a number of Ed's books. He's well known, you know, in terms of uh, uh, um, board governance, both in public and non-public. Uh, and I probably read five or six of his books. Uh, this was a new one relative to looking at the these current committees, which re re represent the operations of the school district, but not the systems of the school district. And so it's much more along the lines of systems thinking. You know, in terms of how you might restructure your standing committees to do some of the same stuff, but in a, and I think in a, a more meaningful context, you know, of the whole. So, so again, yeah, so twofold. One is that the executive committee would take a look at this book and just discuss it, what we take from it, but it also reinforces the um, model that we've already wanted to shift to. Sure. Um, and then third being that um, we, uh, look at, at at the executive committee how, or are our committee assignments fine, not assignments, but the ones we have, or do we want to look at a different structure? Does it make it better systematically to do something different? And Challenging that looks ourselves. Like. Correct. 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 So, um, and for those out there, this is building a high impact board superintendent partnership with, uh, by Doug Eady, E-A-D-I-E. -E. Um, we can pass it to Lori and sure. add that to the minutes. Um, yeah, I think that that's a good idea because, you know, we always want to be 
you don't want to be listening to your own echo chamber. You want to be challenging. And, and it suggests some other things like rotating. It's important to rotate, you know, to get board members from different committees and then some of your standing committees become part of your governance committee or executive. I don't remember exactly. It's been you know a little while since I last read it, but but again, I'll go through it again and, and work to assist. You know, from my perspective, I are, I've already bought this book for my administrative, my directors, because I, I you know we need to really be tuned in with the board in terms of how we work together to get, to get the school district business done and have that deep level of understanding. Okay. So I think it's really important. So. And since the executive committee right now is you know acting as a, a governance committee because we had nowhere to kind of put that stuff, I think that's why it's um, important that we go through that first. Um, and, and look at that. And then um, the other thing with uh, regarding this and kind of the flow of information, and you're going to see here, um, you know, we talked about how do we get uh, information to the right spot or on, on an agenda or to the forefront. And so my suggestion would be is that we um, meet more often as an executive committee, look at what's come in and refer that to the chair of that committee. Um, and, and so then there's a clear flow of information uh, that it comes and then we, we direct it. You know, so then, you know, we are, I just see like at the end of our meetings, sometimes we're kind of waffling about who's having a meeting, who's not having a meeting, mm -hmm. what's on the agenda, how do we get something on an agenda. And if it came to governance um, and that, you know, we're like, okay, here's this, let's pass it off refer to the to finance, Correct. refer to curriculum, refer, yep, and so on. Yeah. Correct. <clears throat> um, so that uh, then everybody, you know, and I think that's what we've been trying to do with the drop, you know what I mean? We're trying to figure out a way that, um, you know, for as we move to a, a working committee structure, how to get those things there and where do they go? Yeah. Um, so, uh, I was just going to, when we can talk about another meeting, but, um, you know, let's start reading the book and then, you know, we'll talk about what chapters we're going to read for next time or something. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. I'm on board. Um, you did start already? Yeah. Oh, why am I behind yeah, the I did too. Here? Jeez. Because he didn't give it to you. Oh. I guess I got to speed it up a little That's bit. Right. <laughs> I think I'm a chapter five already. Oh, go awesome. <laughs> I would also convey, you know, transitions, um, you know, can be challenging, um, not only for the board, but for, for you know, the directors and, and everybody else who's in play and getting back to consistency, you know, in terms of, uh, Stacey and I even talked about how important it is just knowing the time of the meetings and that they're regularly scheduled so that everybody, you know, you know, staff, uh, you know, have meetings that they plan for unless they've got a board meeting that they're putting into their schedule. So getting us all to, you know, figuring out how to streamline our stuff, keep everybody with enough lead time. Yeah, I mean, so all these things, I think we're all going to benefit from, you know, become highly efficient and effective relative to how we engage people in the process. So, and this might be, uh, I like the, like where you're going with it. Um, can we have, I mean, start putting out there the meetings that we are going to have on the calendar, even if we're not necessarily, like say, take for example, um, the general meeting, have every single general meeting, because there is some consistency kind of right now, we have like 6 p.m., um, put those all in the calendar so that there's already just a, an a lot of time. And we which, just know which calendar? The Google, the Google calendar where everything's all been you probably had that before, but with the shifting, I don't know that you know that there was somebody not, felt that right. we finalized. Yeah, this. exactly. So, so this would obviously, um, you know, help Lori. Um, I, I think in terms of uh, and everybody else in terms of setting the plan, so they, mm -hmm. could, they could schedule evenings or other events or yeah, preparation. Get on there. I know my so like I'm looking at mine right now, and I like take for example, we got uh, the uh, uh, September meeting. I don't necessarily, maybe it's just mine. Maybe I, I have to figure out how. Maybe the summer meeting's not on there yet because oh, right. there was talk at the last meeting. We weren't sure. I mean, the general meeting, it was mm -hmm. like through a certain date that it was going to be six o'clock. So oh. I didn't go any further. Okay. okay. Right. And if you put it on there, it's because of. If you put it on there and then it gets rescheduled, <laughs> then it gets confusing and someone shows up at this time and then it's that time. So that's sure. why I didn't do it. Just okay. Okay. Cool. 
So yeah, I like the idea of consistency. I know even the public had mentioned something along So then maybe we can um, finalize what that consistent date, what is the drop date on that, Kathy? October. October, okay. So um, let's add that to our next um, general meeting to discuss what, what the meeting time is gonna be consistently. Okay. Date and time. Do we wanna iron out have consistency on our committee meetings as well. Have you know? I think so. Let's have think finance be meeting every every so often, and at then a specific time, and they're basically into it, and everybody can plan. Accordingly. Yeah, because even not even, not even just those committees. Like no, I know curriculum does that. Mm -hmm. um, is finance doing that? Or finance not? currently has a, a a large swath of meetings that are planned right now. Okay. Um, there. I mean, I can pull up here. I got all the way till. Oh boy. Uh, we have all the way up to January 18th right now planned. Um, whether or not that we still would go with that a committee meeting there, but I mean, uh, not yeah, January 18th is a at four o'clock uh, a Wednesday. We're doing a meeting then, so I mean, we have them all okay. planned out through there. So, well, since we're at this part talking about um, governance and our committee. Why don't we um, why don't we set our date for when we're going to have a consistent um, executive committee meeting? Okay, and I'll I'll touch base with uh, Angela to see if uh, you know what it's because it seems like we're doing Wednesday. I, I think yeah, we're doing every Wednesday. It's like the second Wednesday. I'm pulling up my calendar right now. I got, uh, but we have a lot of other ones in there too. So like we're meeting on the October nineteenth. October 25th. Oh, wait, that's a. Do you. No, that's not committee. Sorry, not to, the 25th is not. That's just. What's the best day to meet for executive? You guys. Not Tuesday. Not Tuesday. Otherwise, any other day. Tuesday's a very busy day for me. Do you guys um, like meeting Wednesday like this after? So you guys are fine. both on that committee? This yeah. Fine. Okay. I'm so like it Wednesdays. Wednesdays at 5 30. Sure. Would you accept yeah. Okay. Want to do twice a month? Yeah, let's do biweekly. I'm good with that because see. So the thing is, like, I think with that, I mean, I guess, are we trying to have them on the books, and then is it easier to cancel? Or I know you had said something along the lines, Lori, about you know the confusion of. Oh, it, you want to do it? Okay. Um. Well, I mean, biweekly is good for me, and then we can always just say we're not going to meet this. Okay. Let's go ahead. So which weeks? You right. Know, can we couple that with finance? What what is it? The second, third? What what are the weeks that you guys meet, or is that so like, changing? Right now, um, oh man, I went too far now. Um, so it's always the second, I believe, the second week in the month. Let me just pull up my actual other calendar here. So that would have been last Wednesday. Right, but in the second, no, we're and now we're in the third. Yeah, then we're on the. Hold on. I see September twenty first. Yeah, which we're is on the third Wednesday. Yeah, we're on third Wednesday, and then we got the thirty first is another one that we're doing. So that one kind of just is biweekly. I think we're just doing every other. I'm almost wondering if it would be better to do it before the general meeting. So that if um, assignments for uh, stuff needs to be disseminated to a committee, they have it right away. I mean, on opposite weeks or right before the general meeting. Before the general meeting. And before the. In time for a posting. Correct. Oh, in time for posting. That yeah, would because be you're to like because you're that. talking about putting it on the agenda. Right. So. Although we probably don't have to have, we probably don't have to wait. I mean, the minute that we get something and assign it to a committee, it can just go. It doesn't need to go to a board meeting. And given the, so like with the budget, part of it is, is you know, there are timelines that she, she needs to adhere to for, you know, rolling out that budget, et cetera. So there really isn't, I mean, there's some consistency, but there is also, well, trying if, to adhere to the, the what if we too. what if we decide that we're going to meet the first wednesday of the month 
sure. that that would be ours. And then um, anything that comes up, we know that the committee is going to meet we can't during, during that. or should meet. Yeah. And then they'll have what at least some of their agenda items are that came out of our meeting. I like that. Well, one well, of the this is changing a little bit, but the other thing I would I would uh, just throw out right now because we're talking about all these committees and yes. and, um, and we were also dealing with some budget and and uh, you know potentially referendum timelines that I think it would be good to turn one of the finance meetings into a joint finance facility meeting uh, and and to potentially bring somebody in to a, you know assist the committee to understand. Um, uh, the importance of these timelines and things to consider, which all schools consider, uh, but but you know making sure that the board is well informed about what that those deadlines are, and then how to back that up. Because if if there is any possibility where we might be thinking of a referendum, you've got three months to plan for that before you're into the you know putting stuff out. Correct. Okay, uh, so all that, you know, so for example, if you do an audit on facilities, you, you have to have that, you know, you know what, why, why are you considering this? Mm -hmm. uh, and so facilities, uh, you know, play an important part, I, I think, in terms of making sure that you understand the conditions of your buildings, um, what resources might be needed there in the short term and the long term. Uh, so so I, I think it could be beneficial to have a joint meeting uh, because that that will play a significant role into finance when you're considering things. Absolutely. So we want to we want to at least have kind of <laughs> moving forward. We want to have at least every single committee meeting at least monthly. Correct. Right. Correct. Yes, and that, correct. that's what we should be doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so um, so we've decided. So do you guys want to do the first and third Wednesday? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Should sound good? Okay. Sure. First and third. Yeah. And why don't we say 530 okay. um, in case there is a meeting, because you guys meet you typically at 4. Could be, yeah, so, we're two, we're almost all, every single one of our meetings right now is at 4 o'clock. Okay. And then that'll be right after that then. Awesome. Okay. It's good too. We have a time plan. Yep. Right. The right thing. Perfect. And how many have number just plenty? Yes. So, okay. Yes. Okay. I don't, sometimes I feel like it's just you know I want to I want to hear more numbers. So. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, go ahead. Um, are you guys through with that topic? Um, yeah. I would like to bring up uh, just some of the things I've noticed of live streaming of committee meetings, just yes. on the topic of uh, the flow of information. Yeah. And you know I thought it might be a good idea just for the sake of increased transparency, and I've had people reach out to me about this too. Um, is it possible to live stream committee meetings uh, from the district website? Um, I know we're, I understand we're doing that now for the regular meetings, and I thought it might be a good idea to do that for the uh, committee meetings as well. Um, and on that same note, um, when meetings are, are posted afterwards, um, is there a way to accelerate that timeline you know it sounds like sometimes there's a period of time where uh it may be longer than some people like before they're able to access that so is there any reason that we can't uh post those meetings immediately or you know within 24 hours whatever is reasonable uh just so the public can have access to it and um the other idea i had that i wanted to throw out there uh is for the the regular board meetings um you know, is it possible to, uh, and uh, correct me if this is off topic, but I thought it's kind of related, uh, but just to improve transparency and the flow mm -hmm. of information uh, for people that may not be able to make it to the meetings. Um, I thought the idea of having an option to do, uh, like the city council does now, where you could use Zoom to remote in to do uh, public input, for example, if mm -hmm. you can't make it very personal. So these are just ideas that I thought I wanted to throw out there. People have reached out to me and expressed some uh, interest in, you know, improving these timelines and, and that type of thing. So I just wanted to bring that up, see what okay. you guys thought. I mean, I don't have any objection to the um, streaming of the meeting. Um, I think the reason traditionally we haven't done it is because we really need a staff person here to do it. Because the times we've tried to do it on our own right. have not worked. <laughs> right, right. Um, 
so, so we the have live a stream account we've been having issues with that we that we use to get it up with YouTube. I know there's been some issues. Jess and I talked about that before. Is there a different Last format time. we could possibly use that isn't what we're using? Yeah, I mean, to make it better. I don't know. There, yeah. there are different models out there. I, I know, you know. I, I mean, so I think it would sure. be reasonable to, to talk with our tech people to, okay. to you know, identify uh, how is this one compared to others that others are using. We use a different system, and it's the cost and it's the the equipment that we have, which has been talked about for the last couple of years. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so my suggestion would be is we currently record the meeting and how long does it take to get the meeting uploaded to the site to be able to view it that i don't know this one will be like right away and last yesterday okay. the curriculum meeting was on almost immediately too mm -hmm. it was okay. on already last it's, night. if the committee um, <clears throat> uh, chair if the committee director um if they have to send it because they're the organizer of that meeting as soon as they send it it can get uploaded okay and does every and it's chair generally within 24 hours? Okay. And does every chair know how to do that? No, it's not the chair, it's the director. Oh, the director. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay. So so two things, Tony. Um we'll have we will ask the I mean, what's reasonable? 24 hours, 48 hours, um, to have those videos um uploaded. I think it, I think a, a a reasonable expectation to be to have set would be 48 rather than 24 because seeing as how we are having issues okay you know this way then if we have the 24 you know say they need to reach out to i don't know texas you know what's going on and right they may not be able to get up touch with somebody right away yeah. 48 gives kind of a little bit of flexibility to kind of troubleshoot and get something so let's say we're, we're gonna we're gonna continue recording that's number one we're going to have it out by 48 hours and then the third thing is jim will talk with technology or is there a committee that we should give that to you know and again i don't know where technology has fit in we don't have its own committee it um, falls under jason right uh, which so is jason curriculum. Is, right that seems weird but okay What's that it seems weird but okay. yeah it is i don't know why well, as it stands he's right the now, technology yeah. You know, there's this this is not an uncommon. There's been quite often debates in terms of where technology rests. You know, first technology was considered an operational support because you use mainframe computers to process payrolls and all that's changed. And then there was also the emphasis <coughs> is the importance of technology for instruction. And so it was like who's and sometimes you had two divisions. You know, typically it likes to be under an umbrella of one. And it, this is just where this district has landed it. Sure. Is there any reason that a director, um, you know, you know, two different, you know, you could draft from two different directors for that committee? Is there any reason that we couldn't have, take for example, buildings and grounds, you know, uh, be taking that up, but yet Jason, in his technology aspect, reporting time? I think it's all possible. Well, and I think maybe that's what we talk about when we talk about restructuring, you know, committees. If there was an operational, you know, that would make sense. In the in the interim, though, of that, I guess what I'm curious about is who can we task with this to look into other streaming options sure. and and bring it to us. Well, um, one of the things that I surfaced and Jason was coordinating a meeting with Jason and his tech and myself, you know, was talking about, you know, some of the challenges we've had here at the board, you know, prior to my even coming on board in terms of what was some of the difficulties and, and uh, you know, we had to cancel here just recent meetings um, uh, um, because of some emergency situations that, that weren't, we weren't able to all attend. But, you know, we are already trying to come together, you know, so this is just another item that needs to be discussed. And I do believe that we bring it back through a committee. Okay. Um, and, so, and whether or not we have that as building the grounds, we feel that's where, you know, um, Jason would accommodate wherever we need to. I mean, this goes back to those committees. There might be a better committee that's more of an umbrella committee that handles yeah. all these, you know, see it's, it because these things kind of should be fitting together in some ways. Right. right. But for now. But for now, uh, we can do it wherever you're comfortable with building or curriculum. And Jason's currently the champion of the technology currently, right? That's correct. So I guess without, so we're not reinventing the wheel, 
on that. If he's already championing it, we should probably task him with continuing to champion that. Um, well, what, what, what if we do this? What if we just, um, uh, if we if the executive committee asks him to look into this issue you can bring it back here and just bring it back, back here and we'll yeah. we'll get an maybe, update yeah so sure. maybe this is, the, this is this is probably the best place okay okay because okay. you're considering you know, do, we want to set a, do we want to set a uh you know a a timeline or a, a we would like to have it completed by x amounts that we're not just discussing about discussing we kind of have some. You want to know what options are? For yeah, us. so we have some. We have some some movement, and as well as some of the technical difficulties we had. Have we resolved those, or are they part of selecting a different system? Right. Well, um, I'll ask him if he if it <clears throat> seems reasonable to have it by the next time we meet, which would be the first Wednesday of the month. Okay. Might be tough, just because yeah. we have a school well, starting. But yeah, sure. But and I'll leave it as an option, like yeah. to see right. what what would work best for him. So okay. Better than later. I think that's yeah. fair. Right. Yeah, yeah. But we have to be flexible too. So. Yep. Okay. Does that? Yeah. Thank you. Help? Um, I'm curious. How much does it cost to live stream the meetings? Is that like? I mean, I guess you got to have another body here, right, to do it. I think you're asking the wrong people. Yeah, we can. I mean, <laughs> these are things that we can come back with. Not only options, but the costs of you know, uh, yeah, what what it takes right now to do some of these things so that we aren't boring about it. Yeah. I mean, while we're looking into it, I would just suggest let's just figure out what that would cost because I think it would be nice to have that option to watch it while it's happening if you can't make it. Mm -hmm. You know, again, just going back to increased transparency. I mean it would be good to get everything out within two days, but right. So so we're we are uh we decided how often will the um executive committee twice place? a month, first and third. Okay. Wednesdays. So definitely uh so the first one, the next one would be September the first, the second, first, third, right? so something like I that. I would suggest the, the next one after that, just with the start of school. Okay. You know, even though that still could be pushed, depending on what we have to do to uh, reach out to to make sure we, we understand what options are out there and the associated costs. I did find out. There. You mean the third when mm -hmm. third Wednesday? Yeah. That makes sense. There's a lot on the plate right yeah, now. There is a lot. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. September 21st is the third one we start. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Then I'll make a suggestion that that's when we would like that information. And should I reach out to? I, I can I'm reach out to him. And, okay. and if that seems to be problematic, then uh, we'll go back and make it the following okay. uh, first one in October. But now I did call the city because the city, yeah. you know, sounds. I mean, when I watch their stuff, it just seems like it's. But they'd use the same thing that we do as far as um, YouTube. The YouTube, but what's there? It's the live streaming service. Oh, it's, service. it's the service that we want to find out maybe what they're using and trying. Because if it's if it's that great, let's emulate what's working, right? Maybe we can partner with them. So that was yeah, the city. Yeah, city management. Yeah, and I think Zoom might be better. You know, maybe it just by lack of experience with Google Meets, but. It just seems to work better. I think the problem, though, is that our whole system across MPSD is Google. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so to add something, I mean, but again, you're New right. I mean, what's sure. what's the what's the cost? Can we keep Google and add Zoom? Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think Zoom's that expensive. And in the grand scheme of things, you know, I think it's important that we, we get something that works uh, just so that it's Have you ever streamed with Zoom though? I use it for business, uh, and no, it's fairly. I guess I don't. You know, I do meetings, right? So correct. I don't. I don't know. That's if, that's, that's the key because if I use just Google, Google Meet for a meeting, yeah. totally easy. It's yeah. this live streaming where it goes out onto something else that somebody can see. Well, how did the? I would talk to City Council because they're. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they did it through Zoom, or at least. I called in through Zoom and I was able to hear everything and see everything and I was able to provide public input. It was right. actually really cool. So we need to yeah. find out what they're streaming mm -hmm. services. Yeah. And Lori just said to me too, one of the things to take into consideration is the cost of course, but apparently our last meeting that we had live streaming, there were three people watching live. So let's so find out what it costs. I mean, it's not like it's being utilized now when it is being live streamed not very well. well but so there, there are other meetings meeting. that are more than three people, too. Right. But so it's just something to take into consideration. I appreciate yep. it. And, and 
Uh, Lori just said, just kind of give us all that information from meetings and stuff too, like how many people have watched and those kind okay. of things. Okay. The data. Yeah. Okay. Sure, all of it cool. Yeah. Maybe they knew how to it get was, there. That I know during COVID, <laughs> when we were virtual, <laughs> right. obviously it was more. Right. But once we went back to in person, it declined. Um, yeah. Just well, and sometimes, you know, for instance, sometimes, um, you know, I would like to pop in on the Thursday ad hoc meeting. Mm -hmm. And it'd be easier for me if it was a live stream, then can I get the code before and you're in your meeting or having to go on to one of the social media sites to get it. Yeah. So, um, you know, that might be the other thing is there may be more people that would be yeah, maybe. watching. I mean, it'd be interesting to see asking, um, you know, one of the people that stream like like Lisa, how many people are watching your ad hoc committee meeting or whatever off of that? Mm -hmm. Because that's saying that they want to see it live, um, but can't get any other way. Yeah, and I think Tony made a good point too, though, about um, people need to know how to access it. That's that's one of our big right property issues. Is like. You know, this is probably reconstruction, but you know, is there a specific link that people can go to There's just automatically to be? Well, there is it? for the meetings. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I don't even know where that is. Oh, right. And a lot of yeah, it's right off the website. So, yeah. So, how would the general public? It says it on the agendas. Oh, wait, the district website oh. it gives all on every meeting, like here, it says um, the public. This is just for a committee meeting. The public may view the recorded meeting by logging onto our district website. It gives the district website address. Click on the district tab, Board of Education, and then live stream link. And that live stream link has all the recorded meetings. And I said it says meetings are listed by meeting uh, meeting name and date. So yeah, it's it's I'm I I it was very easy. But many times I thought we I wish we would utilize, because again, we're talking about flow of information. Yes. <laughs> I wish we would utilize our our MPSC website, like our front pages. There's many school districts who have like, and we do some of this where it's like different things will flash up. You know oh, what right. I mean? That you can, you can, um, it's brought to your attention. So like that would be one of the things, you know, curriculum meeting, you know, September or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that someone, that link could be right there. I like that idea too because it's know. cumbersome to navigate. It, well, and it might be a huge undertaking. I have no idea because I'm not an IT person, but um, <clears throat> but I just think that would be a great way to promote not just our meetings, but a lot of different things in our right in our district that we could be utilizing those first that first page or two of our of our website. Because right now you got to go through like a few different tabs to get there. Yeah, right. unless awesome. you're really familiar with it, it's kind of hard. Um, you know, it would take some time to figure that out because mm -hmm. it's not super intuitive. And, yeah. You know, I like what you just mentioned. Yeah, so can you add one more? You can just pop out right away. Hey, there's a meeting going on right now. It's like, you know, visit our website so they can watch it. Can you add one more thing? If there's a way to, on our um, homepage, our NPSD homepage, um, when you get to the, I'm going to open it up here at the bottom where there are like calendar menu infinite campus staff directory enrollment if if there could be added a button that says live stream of meetings or something sure oh just a little hot button yeah. click right. in yeah because you know this is what it looks like now yeah. right? mm -hmm. when you scroll down and if we had that right uh, just click on live stream whatever and that's how they get in it would just be, hopefully it would be just moving it to that. I, yeah, I don't think it's that complicated. No, all it is, I mean, yeah. I think I've, I've built a website before and all I, I mean, create an icon, create a path, and then it creates product. Right. Yeah, it's, you just need to get someone that knows how yeah. to do it, but it's not, I don't think it's that expensive or complicated. I'm wondering um, if the other thing is, In talking about that too, if you want something on the website about meetings, what what would be wrong with, um, or would it be too much on there if we had uh, on the calendar the meetings on that calendar that are right on the website on the front? Oh, and then people just can see, hey, we got this meet this. 
so these, like, these are the meetings that are coming up and all they do is just click into the meeting. Right, so there's an icon, right, yeah. um, of calendar. Right. And if we click on calendar, it pops up the calendar, but yeah. the only thing that's on it are- the open, the open house. Yeah, the open house for things, transition day, all that kind of stuff. But what if we added our meetings on there? Well, and I've often thought when I visited our site too, that we could be utilizing the calendar and those front pages so much more. Right. Like first of all, for communication of things, for the, almost like advertising and promoting your district it would be mm -hmm. a great way to do that. But the calendar, in past years, I've looked for specific things and haven't found it on the calendar myself. So yeah, we should have like, why is it just all on one big calendar? Well, you could, Everything you could going on in the district. Active. You start right. thinking about athletic events. I mean, you can see oh, yeah. all the things that can easily fill up a calendar. So, so. But that's they are on there, but it's always a separate calendar. Well, that, I mean, so that's the. Can it be put on one? I, each I building it, has a separate calendar because there's different events that go on, on. Um, at each right. building. You know, like okay. one right. building might have this thing going right there. PTA or PTO thing on, so they have their own separate calendar as well. Yeah, so it's it's a you know it's a decision about overwhelming you know yeah. to, to challenging to navigate. I mean you yeah. know so there um, again these are things that we can review because what we're just trying to do is is most definitely when we're looking at district business that the community feels totally engaged because of the easy access. Yeah. Right. So, right. it's so easier maybe, to buy and so maybe mm -hmm. maybe for now um we have jim take those things to jason and jessica and just say this is kind of what possible. we're looking at yeah. and and What's what possible. what ideas right. do you think that you have for us yeah. to do that That's part of good. that uh part of that uh, research could we also get some uh uh a little bit uh, of uh figuring as to where we're at with the uh, multimedia um for the boardroom too. I think we were looking at one time, we were looking at, um, yes, yeah, she has, um, Jessica has uh, some quotes yeah. for redoing the- And that'd be good to just tie that all into yeah, one good. thing too. Okay, so we'll just look for an and update. again, you know, this goes back to why I was suggesting the combination of facilities finance, you know, right. and whether or not we are planning for what types of revenues do we need to support mm -hmm. our operations that we, we really start understanding all our needs Right. right. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you for that, Tony. Good ideas. Um, so the security and actor sh active shooter review. Um, this item, um, I believe Colin yeah. asked for this. I wanted to know, I guess, you know, that it's been in the news a lot, you know, active shooters. Um, security has been one of the, the discussed points that we've had. Uh, brought in public a lot too. Um, I guess it, I, I wanted to put on there, uh, one, because people want to know. Two, I had some curiosity to it as well as to, um, you know, wh what did, are we, are we, what are we looking into? Where are we going with uh, response to this? Um, how are we doing overall? Um, and are we challenging our, um, our security? for our, our schools um, to make sure that they're as safe as possible. So I wanted to bring that discussion to, you know, bring that up so that we could be uh, aware of, you know, what it is that we're doing. Uh, can it be more um, and make sure that we're doing enough. So I guess so, I was looking for some some sort of update. I would like to, I'd like to get an update on that, where we're at with that. So this would be kind of one of those governance things that I'm wondering if um, we ask, uh, buildings and grounds um, to kind of do an audit of what we're doing now mm -hmm. um, and give us, um, you know, uh, the information about what we're doing, um, what are we currently using as far as active shooter, things like that. And so that we have that committee work on that and give us back an update of uh, this is what we're doing now. Um, we don't see any gaps or we think that we need to be doing this or whatever. This is one of the things that I've been attempting to, obviously I've got to come up speed on our whole process and, and, I, and I believe we'll find that we have a very significant comprehensive plan together, but we've got a whole new board and we just talked about sometimes the challenges of finding stuff on the web, right? right? You know, so, so it's, it's, it's very beneficial, it provides an opportunity for us to, I mean, I looked at a video clip, you know, that was done, you know, kind of highlighting what we do 
with a more recent rollout, um, you know, and it's it's really good. And so it's many schools are doing. So so there there's there's a lot I think in place. It doesn't mean everything is exactly where it needs to be. But I felt pretty good when I started looking because I need the assurance myself that that's a high priority for me. I've got to ensure that we have a safe and uh, orderly schools, you know, that parents feel comfortable, staff feel comfortable, it's a learning environment, and they feel, uh, you know, safe. So I felt really good, you know, from my, but again, I think it's really, it would be beneficial for us too. And security is a very dynamic thing. You know, it's always going to, it, it always is very, di it always right. is changing. Right. You know, you're going to learn from different things. What, hey, what did we do wrong here? What could we have done better? Right. And, you know, hopefully we're benchmarking those things as well, just to make sure that we are. Even as I, you know, I identified, uh, you know, a recent situation, you know, was out there, you know, just to make sure that we understood I wanted the board to be informed about it. And I easily found, you know, uh, uh, our internal resources to help me. Yeah, so I think it's, that. again, it's an awareness. Um, so um, I guess, Lori, I would put down that we are asking buildings and grounds to just give us a, a, an update um, of our current policy procedure, how we, um, what we're doing now. An overview of our system. An overview of our um, security uh, and that, uh, so that we can all have that information. And they probably have it. It's just, they probably do, yeah. It's just not. Just needs to we be. just haven't seen it. Yep. So that was my reasoning in, in uh, um, wanting to put this on the agenda for today, okay. just so that we could have that discussion and get get that short up, make sure that it is being And Matt, does that sound, um, since you're on that committee, does that sound uh, like it makes sense when we give that directive to the committee of what you guys Crystal are clear. do? Okay, perfect. Awesome. Okay. 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 Um, the next um, idea or the next uh, agenda item is the employee appreciation opportunities. And I know Colin, you would ask for that to be on there. Yeah, I did. Um, so I had asked the, for this one. Um, I, I, we're obviously, we're spending, you know, some, some money for uh, referral bonuses. Um, there has been a notice of um, a employees uh, leaving the workforce um, for a number of reasons. Um, and then there's also just, you know, the, the rumblings you hear in the, in the public and in, in, uh, from different teachers, whether it be that they feel, uh, valued, whether they are up to the, the challenge of, uh, of being in this industry versus other industries. Um, it can be, you know, it can be very challenging. Um, I think that that, us on the board are very um, perceptive of the, the the feeling of it being a challenging uh, uh, industry. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, what are we, I kind of wanted to ask, what are we doing for uh, employee appreciation? Are there things we could do, be doing more? Um, are there things like, could it be, I you know, last year we went to Keel and there was a, an award ceremony for all these educators um, and in our, uh, and some of them were from our district. Are there things that we could be doing in our district to award, you know, stellar performance? Um, just make that, you know, give the mention of that these these individuals are going, not just, not just coming to work, they're not just showing up, they're going above and beyond. So are we doing things like that to really kind of reward and make those individuals that are going above and beyond feel uh, get, are they getting the high five? So my suggestion would be on <clears throat> this one is that we um, uh, flip this to personnel and ask what we're doing now, mm -hmm. um, how that's received, and especially with our new HR director, right? Um, and see seeing how it's received, and then um, you know, is there anything that we could be doing different? You know you know, what's the word on the street, so to speak, of what would be better incentives or, you know, things like that. Yeah. I was just thinking too, why, <clears throat> why not have a really short teacher survey and ask them what would make you feel more appreciated as a teacher? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, it shouldn't always be financial. I mean, right. the sad thing is it can't always be financial. Right. So like as a board or as a district, what can we do to make them feel more appreciated? It might be showing up. 
you know, we could, we've had um, people say like, it would be great if we could have been there this summer for for the summer program, you know, those kinds of things. Um, you know, and Stacey did a great job of trying to have everyone start showing up for different events, like math appreciation at Jefferson, those kinds of things. So, you know, maybe we just have much a, a more concerted effort to do that, but that's only one idea. Right. And the teachers would certainly have a better idea, I think, of what would make them feel appreciated. So maybe just throwing that survey out, I don't think it would really cost anything to do that. Right. Maybe maybe have just two options on there, you know, a one, uh, you know, ones that do cost money and ones that don't cost money. You know, what are your, what are their ideas too? Um, because then, you know, hey, if, if we can't afford it, as we tackle budget issues, at least we're doing something, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and I think sometimes too, um, you know, we, we need to think a little bit outside the box. You know, I think that there are, um, you know, organizations out there, businesses, things like that, that may um, want to underwrite you know, mm -hmm. something for us to appreciate our educators um, and staff. Uh, so, you know, that might be just another thing if it's if it's an outpouring of, yes, this really would be it, um, and it would cost a lot of money to do, we might be able to get someone to underwrite that. So, so there, there's a few things here that are surfacing. I think the personnel that's just, that's right into to that committee structure, you mm -hmm. know, in terms of wanting to know and I think just like we were talking before, kind of that in terms of what are we already doing? Mm -hmm. Because I think sometimes we'd be surprised right. about right. what we don't know right. that's happening. Yes. Uh, but, and then I would also say that annually we do three surveys through school perceptions, you know, staff, student, and, and parents. Uh, you know, so knowing whether or not there's something already in there. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, that's the whole thing. Uh, you know, who would uh, not want us to understand as much as we can relative to and I always like those companies that you hear that they're identified as one of the most the best places to work. Right, right. right. You know, I mean, who who would not want that? I mean, you know, the, the more somebody enjoys coming to work, the more that um, our clientele, our, our students and our parents are going to feel really good in the community. Right. So, I mean, I think this is all positive, but it's always starting with, I mean, particularly now with a new board, myself being new, I'm, I'm trying to, this is all of interest to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, but but I also recognize why we're doing a lot, mm -hmm. you know. And so sometimes it's just knowing that, sharing that, celebrating it, and, and then filling the gaps sometimes. Another idea too for the survey part would be to, uh, and this would be more your role. <clears throat> I think it's asking the principal leadership or or directors what they are doing yep. because they we can ask the teachers what they want, but maybe there are already those things in place. Like even within certain buildings, they may do different things. So I'd be interesting to ask them. And I would share right now. There's already issues that are coming to my desk. They're challenges. Um, you know, and, and that is, you know, first of all, I, we've always had, but you know, it can easily get outdated because of the environment that we're in right now. But we're having challenging hiring people, mm -hmm. and and now we're we're stuck on it. You know, so I won't consider that's not enough. Mm -hmm. And yet, if we offer that, they're going to be making higher than people are here. And they're going to see so so they're, they're, it's important to revisit it's really very difficult you're in a hiring problem yeah. and the incentive isn't enough they want to know that i'm going to have a competitive wage why would i leave right i mean you know but you know so all of this stuff is really important out there and it's important for our staff to know that we're looking at this stuff so i think bringing visibility to this it doesn't mean that there won't be challenges you know you got to have the resources it's no free lunch you know, we go back to our taxpayers and, and to the state, you know, in terms of uh, funding sources. But uh, clearly, we recognize that we're we're in the uh, the business of teaching and learning, mm -hmm. and we want to be the best. Uh, and so, we need to know, you know, in terms of how effective we are on all fronts. I guess uh, you had mentioned the uh, underwriting uh, business uh, you know, business uh, participation, mm -hmm. and uh, is there? Do we have? I know we have the the foundation currently has uh, brought on that marketing person to really kind of reach out there. So that kind of right now we have that individual. Do we have other ways that we're reaching out to, you know, parents and um, even just uh, the community um, seeking ways that we can, you know, for partnership to really kind of come in, you know, I mean, I don't know. Um, the, is, are there other, are we seeking them do you, uh, for 
Are there opportunities that you want to be involved with in, within the district? Are we just even having that conversation? Kind of getting volunteers for even like, you know, whether it be sporting events or different uh, organizations. Like, Well, we do. I mean, like, I think the biggest business one is with our youth apprentice program and with mm-hmm. other, you know, so, but is it solely out there uh, and, you know, I just talked to a parent this morning. I mean, they're the ones that are in charge of a lot of the um, sports and music associations and all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, so they're connecting. But again, is there a systematic yeah. overall? Do we have a process to make them to connect the dots, you know, back to the district mm-hmm. rather than just this is that there's autonomy over here, autonomy over here, autonomy over here. And nobody's talking. You know, nothing's happening. It's just a bunch of, you know, uh singularities versus a, you know a cohesive unit i i don't think so no i think they're all siloed yeah i think some of them work together like having you know all sports but you know then even certain ones break out into their own sure right but and again i think you target different things for for different reasons right you yeah. know so um i think it might make more sense if you know, when we talk about, um, like we've talked about key stakeholders, right, and being part of strategic planning or, um, you know, that we, someone develops the a list for personnel type of things. Um, yeah. But I think, I think to start, let's bring it to personnel. Let's find out what we're doing um, now um um possibly i'll talk with mary and just you know see what kind of ideas she has but maybe do a survey to get um any information um to kind of critique what we're doing now and what we could be doing better just like the ends. yeah yeah and, um, and there's been a lot of changes too so it might even just be you know let's get a benchmark to see hey what are what's the perception of the of those that are out there what right. do they think right i, I, I yeah. would also um suggest and this is something that i heard from this this uh Board, you know, through through the, the um, search and in, in my application and wanting to be part of this, uh, uh, one thing that I felt very strongly about, and that I also heard from everybody, Tony specifically, you know, was was having you know kind of our dashboard. You know, how do we keep some of these highly visible? Mm-hmm. You know, in terms of how we're doing, you know, whether or not it's that satisfaction barometer. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so that we also work this back in in terms of trying to figure out how to share, you know, to find out, to learn, and, and to share, you mm-hmm. know, what we're doing so that um, people are able to, uh, you know, see this. So, so I think there's a lot of things of, of interest here that, you know, again, we're throwing out a lot and, mm-hmm. and it's busy when we're through a lot of transition. Uh, but working these things back into the system, back through these committees. Um, and then in a meaningful way, we start taking these on and then figure out how do we keep track of this. I mean, one of the things that's really important, too, as you talked about governance, is what's your onboarding for a new board member, you know, to, to get them uh, and cultivated, you know, into the right. to the system so that we, we are wanting it to continue in terms of building on strengths. I just want to say this publicly. Uh, I've come and listening, obviously, just trying to analyze it. And I, I think that for the, the committee of this, this committee itself, I think you should charge a director, depending on the agenda, to be here, because otherwise, like you said, it's just just being siloed, and you're just kind of like, you need to get answers, because otherwise it just gets pushed off another month, another month, another month. The director should be here pertaining to the agenda for you to answer they, them to answer to you. So that you have clarity and that doesn't just go down to the next level and it, so that's just my perspective at this moment that you should charge the directors depending on what your agenda is that they should be here to answer questions directly right now right so that's just my opinion at this from seeing what the guys are talking about you do we do that in the committee now obviously in the committees we have and we have directors here but i think this this committee Whatever your guys' agenda, you know, charge them to be here for you to for them to answer. Because sometimes they might be have an answer right away, and it might be great. And then sometimes we never under under we never find out if there is a problem if they're doing their job correctly or if they're doing a great job. So that's why I think that would just fill in the, the gaps a little more. Just in, you know, obviously we're 
discovering this as we go on, but I think that would help uh, you guys be more effective. Well, I think, I mean, again, if we, if we're moving to a more uh, committee based structure and this committee is the one that's getting requests and it's not going specifically to that committee, I rather it be like a, a, a deadline, like we're going to do with the, um, cause, cause right now, um, you know, here we, and this is maybe an outlier example, but we have a new HR person. She may not know all the appreciation stuff we do. And so I, when I, when um, Colin asked this to be on here, I wasn't quite sure what exactly specifically we were going to address except that I knew it would probably get funneled to a committee. And so now once it goes to that committee and it's on that agenda, then the um, person, the director of that, then will work with that committee to provide the information. Yeah, I think you guys have been doing a great job, obviously. It's, uh, you know, it's not like we were handed the golden key of excellence of, of governance already. So I think you're doing a very good job for where you came from. To start, so, so I'm hoping it. that I'm hoping that we get some of those um, now that we have a set meeting that we'll yeah. get those time frames and um, uh, people's agendas will be more fruitful. So I might also yeah. add, you know, to try to even get a little bit further ahead of this, we, um, we we aren't thinking about what's the charge to these committees and, and what is the role of the chair to actually be looking for these items themselves, you know, so so what's the bylaw sort of the charge of a you know, so to the extent that they become an active committee, you know, where, you know, in some ways information is already getting directed to them because um, maybe the community understands the committee structure and, and where maybe to channel some stuff. So again, you, you will, another way to frame this is what is the personnel committee trying to um, you know, to understand, is it just when people are sending things to them, like, right. or is it because they're taken on in a proactive way right. about in what are the guidelines of this committee? Right. Why, why are we formed? You know, so, so I mean, there's another way to the extent that you now have empowered others to be, you know, be thinking forward here in terms of the significance of that committee relative to its work. I could just add real quick. Um, yeah. I think these are some great ideas, and um, you know, I like Kathy's idea of reaching out to teachers. You know, I like the idea of reaching out to businesses to help offset costs. I'm sure there would be uh, businesses in town that would be willing to to help with that. And um, in my experience, uh, I think it's it's great to uh, recognize your staff and engage staff, and it's going to always perform better than one that's not. So I, I think we're on the right track with this conversation and I think we should explore all these opportunities. And, you know, when we're looking at, uh, I would even take it a step further, you know, people that really go above and beyond, um, you know, I think that deserves some additional recognition. For, and we should, as we're moving to uh, create this culture of higher achievement and higher performance, we're gonna need to enroll the staff uh, to do that. Mm -hmm. and. So I just wanted to say this is a really good and productive discussion from my vantage point. I'm glad I got to hear this and uh, you know, I'll certainly do what I can to help support this effort. You have to say there's one part of me that's hesitant about like the people who go above and beyond because there's so many people who are teachers here who go above and beyond all the time, but don't toot their own horn. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of goes unnoticed, right? So when you have that person who's really good at vocalizing it or a friend who recognizes it. So, so sometimes it's just the more vocal person. So I feel like if we could reach out to everyone, like I'm just a little more hesitant and just like, well, this person is the employee of the month. Well, why, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. Sure. Because it might be the really, that person who sits back more and doesn't look for the limelight that we don't actually notice who's doing some phenomenal things in their classroom. Or kids. Well, you could so. think of it also like um, a sporting team. You know, are you going to highlight the quarterback? Yeah. You know, uh, you know, as the it's you know, the without team. recognizing sometimes the, the significant work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so so in, in some ways you want to promote team and to celebrate team. And yet, the other hand, there are people who do, 
and, and staff would be the first to comment on other staff. You know, honestly, I mean, so it does happen. I feel like, when I, feel like I want to do my board survey over again. I know we're thinking that already too, but okay. Um, uh, oh, okay, and I'm just to make sure. Let's go home. Um, okay. That's a good point. I just want to say, Kathy, I didn't think about that, but uh, I also think just on that note, you know, when you look at stuff like some of the teachers that got recognized publicly for some of those awards uh, yeah. towards the end of last year, like that's awesome. Like, yeah, that really, you know, to me, that's stuff that, uh, you know, and I agree with you, there's a lot of people that are just doing their jobs that are probably not going to be loud about it, that are just showing up every day, you know, your uh, lunch pail type people, right, that are just doing it, but on a, so that's where I was at. So but yeah. that was a good point. Yeah. I mean, that, you know, I'll, I'll, to, I'll tell, what am I trying to say right now? Not sure. I'm, I'll promote the teachers who mm -hmm. showed up almost every single week, all summer, summer long, mm -hmm. unpaid right. to work on the code of conduct. Mm -hmm. Who they weren't, they didn't get anything special for doing it. They just did it because they cared. Mm -hmm. So maybe I need to shout their names out at some point, you know, because mm -hmm. that that was phenomenal. I mean, they didn't get any recognition whatsoever. I didn't ask for any. But there's a lot of those people in our district. So it's just kind of like, and I'm always going back to the ad hoc group I know on the plan, sorry, but but it's about the universal idea of a behavior plan. It's the idea of belonging to, to a, a universal thing, right? We talk about our students wanting to, a sense of belonging in their schools so that there's more pride. And I feel like the same thing with our teachers, like making them feel appreciated. And we're all part of this big thing to be proud of and that they're appreciated. Like you wanna be part of something, not just recognized as an individual. So I know that's like kind of bag in a way, but I just, that was something that was playing in my head just now. Okay, awesome, thank you. Um, okay, so we will definitely look at that. At, we'll talk with Mary, and we'll also um, look at that at personnel. Um, okay, so the interim superintendent travel reimbursement. This actually came up um, through Angela. Did you guys talk about this at um, finance at all? Not no? today. No. Okay. Have ever? Not that I remember no. seeing. No. <laughs> okay. So, I'm guessing we should bring it through finance. Yes. Okay. Um, so. Um, I believe Angela discovered that, you know, the superintendent has, uh, well, that all the directors. All the directors, else? my understanding, actually, Joyce brought this to my attention. Oh, it was and Joyce. Then Angela brought it okay. to my attention, okay. both separately, um, um, uh, that the directors, rather than reimbursing them for mileage, uh, they receive a textual annuity instead of that, you know, that uh, you've provided them uh, from, I, I believe, if I recall correctly, from twelve hundred to sixteen hundred dollars. You know, I, I think maybe our facilities person who is going to facilities all the time, mm -hmm. you know, is, is getting a little bit larger of an allowance. But that was the way for at some point in time in the past that there appeared to be an agreement in terms of what was reasonable on both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously you could compensate them; they'd be turning their mileage all the time after they're leaving their home base if they're traveling. Right. Um, so it was a way to to to. Um, you know, to, to reimburse them. So Angela already knows about this because she saw it and it was kind of like, well, why isn't that in the superintendent, interim superintendent? So um, um, could you, uh, uh, so what I'm wondering is if can we bump, can we bounce this to um, finance and yeah. make uh, just a recommendation to the board um, to do that, not do that? I mean, if it, if it comes out of committee, I guess is what I'm saying, so that you guys would explore that. Yep. I'll okay. bring this up in the audience. Okay. I would also just um, identify that uh, in in your negotiating contract with me, you provided me an allowance uh, to pay uh, any fees to get out of my last contract, and okay. those fees got waived, so I did not use that. You know, just mm -hmm. so that you're aware that I don't. Oh, okay. You were great. That was nice of them. That was yes. nice. It was nice of you too. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Um, the interim superintendent evaluation scheduling. Um, so this, uh, you know, since we are in an interim superintendent state, um, I think it would be a good idea um, to, as a board, for us to uh, 
touch base with Jim um, on a semi-regular basis about what's how, how he's doing, what's going on, um, especially as the strategic plan rolls out and, um, you know, other initiatives that we're going to talk about. So um, what I'm suggesting is that we would meet in closed session um, at either the general or the special. I'm, I'm thinking more of the general, but it doesn't have to be whatever we decide um, that and have a closed evaluation session of to talk with Jim, how he's doing, what's going on, um, and um, so we can have sort of an ongoing evaluation, things that you know, we're still looking to see and okay. um, all that kind of stuff. So um, does it does it sound feasible to do you have a preference on either one of the meetings to go into that closed session and have that be on there, let's say once a month? I don't need, I don't know that we need to do it more than that um that seems cumbersome to do it more than once a month yeah and Thank also we are adhering to our current um I'm, I'm guessing he's being included into the standard superintendent's performance evaluation schedule as well correct so the one that we we would adhere to whether he was interim or not interim i think we should be one we should be adhering to that schedule as if he were to not be interim okay. and that way then we have some continuity amongst years that we're continuing on those same times and paths um but i, I mean i'm fine with uh you know in, in between there having an evaluation you know just to kind of it's, it's really kind of you know i see it i think this is beneficial i appreciate you surface and it is you know because the one thing you don't want to do is second guess, you know, why you hired people, right. you know, and, and you have set down some parameters and yet you're going through and time goes by pretty fast. You want to be able to make adjustments if you aren't, you know, by not, you know, um, uh, fulfilling, um, you know, it's, it's just providing me an opportunity to get that feedback in terms of how things are going, how I'm doing, and to explain where I'm going, maybe, you know, in terms of, um, you know that you know so that we've got a chance to adjust you know so that i do fulfill the uh, what your expectations were for an interim superintendent well and i don't even know what you know i'm interested in terms of what, you know the continuation of that you you should be so i guess uh to that it sounds you know that one you would like this it and, would be good I, and I, it's I, like i feel like i know but i yeah. don't know you know right. so I'm, i I'm, guess I'm, I, I made sure that i'm meeting weekly with stacy Mm -hmm. you no, know, but you know it's the whole board that's my boss right um, so i guess you know. to that I, I mean if it's something that you feel would help you in support of your role yeah. in doing that to the best of your ability i'm on board with i'm, I'm fairly good that. i just you know sure deck is always good you know i mean and that's okay you know, so i'm open to it i mean that's i think it's great yeah with the whole board and and then I think it, it also gives us an opportunity for some of those uh, those the things that are out there still um, that um, that he can update us yeah. all. There's at a lot, the there's same a lot time. of sense, you know, in mm -hmm. many ways. You know, buck stops here. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, and I would say that my practice is um, when things are going well, it's the staff, and when they don't, it's me. Sure. I mean, so we so can I only yell at them at the same time all right. of separately. So Forty five <laughs> days. What's that? Yeah, how often? How frequency would be? Yeah. Well, I was thinking once a month we would just tack it I on as a special that. meeting sure. um, onto our. It I'm sorry. You know, it can be uh, as lengthy as have it, have it be a closed yeah. session at the end of our general session. I'm feeling very comfortable, but sometimes, you know, communications can close down. I mean, work gets challenging, issues become significant, and, you know, but what we need to do is have open channels, and I need to be honest with you, and you need to be honest with me. Okay. You know, in terms of what it takes to, to get the job done. Um, what I don't want is have any any time there where we should have been talking and we weren't. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, it's good to be proactive on that. And I guess on that note, I, if I had to pick one, just because the agendas tend to be shorter, I'd probably pick that. The special. So, the special. Yeah. The second one. I was kind of thinking the same thing, okay. Tony, just because yeah. we've already got public input and. Yeah. The only thing to that, though, and this might be something to keep in mind. We don't always have those special meetings. I know that oh, we are anticipating having. Oh, my foot fell asleep. Ah. 
anyway, um, <laughs> sorry. Um, we don't always have those. I know we're gonna be having quite a few special meetings coming up here based on the scope of work, but it is, is that something that we would wanna tack onto a special meeting given that those are not necessarily planned occurrences? Well, you did say we're gonna have them for like the next six months, so. <laughs> you know, and like this isn't, I mean, we're talking about a closed session, so it's not, it doesn't involve the public, so if it did change, like yeah. the time or the day, that wouldn't matter as much. Um, True. So like at least for six months, we have consist we could have some consistency with that, and then and then go from there. So then going back to um, that, are we planning on having special meetings then every month? Yes, I, I see that for at least six months. So it cookie. shouldn't even be brought. It, it shouldn't even be. A, we should be planning every month. Every month that will be an agenda. Yeah, that we're That's having right. special meetings moving right. forward. Right. So at the, again, at the end of our general, we don't have to go. Are we going to have one? We well, are. then I guess to that, you know, this is part of the discussion that occurred last year. Was should we call it what? not a special meeting because it's no longer than special? It is actually almost a second meeting so okay so um one of the things that um uh, because i thought about that today as well um and i think because we're not going to be doing our general business it's going to be sort of special out of the box kinds of things okay. such as yeah um that you know because again we're not going to i asked jim you know that any meeting minutes, things like that, consent agenda, all that's going to come on the general, mm -hmm. so that that meeting's going to remain the special. Right. Oh, the general meeting will meet. The general meeting will, before. Correct, and that the the only items on there would be something that is totally emergent, which would probably be um, budgets, budget, person bu budget yeah. personnel, um, and then anything else that is okay. uh, kind of special, out of books, superintendent search, all that. Correct. So is there a sunset to continual sunset meetings? Or is, is there a sunset to the continual special meetings? Are we going to be continuing through these till the end of the year that we would have continual special meetings? I think what, what I would propose is that we look at that, um, we look at the issue again um, at the reorg. Uh, when we get our at the reorg in April. Yep. Okay. Casey, can I just clarify? Yes. So, like, I'm preparing the agenda for next Tuesday's meeting. Yes. And on the draft agenda, I currently have a consent agenda on there with yes. minutes from the last meeting. And do you want me to take those off and just push that to the September general meeting? I would. Okay. Yep. Yep, I would. Thank you. And, Lori, that fits the timeline in terms of the requirements for approving minutes, right? Oh yeah, they can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a timeline, I think. Yeah, you can't keep it out there too long. Right. Okay. In the past, like before, like me, the minutes were, if there was a meeting and a special meeting, or like at the general meeting, and if they weren't necessarily on that special meeting, right. they were on like that file on general meeting. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think that that'll just then give continuity to that general meeting and what's going to be there okay. what the expectations are and that the truly the other meeting is it's special that there's other okay. things okay. that are not typical as long as it adheres to that then, then I, yeah then i'm on board just because i'd like to you know space you know what i mean right yeah um okay so we will um we will add that closed <laughs> session to our special meeting which is the the second one the end of the meeting correct, correct. yeah and okay. what will that entail i'm sorry what will that um we are going to do um i'm just calling it superintendent evaluation um is what we're going to be covering during that time and feedback probably i'm guessing right yeah um so then are we meeting at 6 p.m progress towards goals um you know how is he doing towards the objectives set by the board okay I and mean, that's kind of stuff and that's we're going to be having the for those special meetings those are every those are going to be continuing on with the 6 p.m um yes. that we have established already 
until October. Until and October. And then we're changing it. And what are we changing? Has it been discussed about what we change to? No, we will talk about that now. Okay. So that would be something we bring up in our next exec. Yeah. I mean, yeah. everybody should have a voice. We probably that. should do it. Um, or include it in our general. Let's do, kind of yes, let's do our right general. Now, yeah. We'll do it in September, our September, our general meeting. Yes. Okay. We'll ask everybody because it's going to affect the next. It's going to affect everybody. Right. Yeah. October. Right. I mean, yeah. Okay, okay, so we're going to be discussing, I'm sorry, at the next, at the September general meeting, we're going to be discussing um, the the time um, and date of our special meetings. Our, our meetings. Both of them. Both? Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Sure, why not come out both? Sure. I know what you, yeah. I just, I know part of the public was requesting that we have continuity and I, cautious to after we've established continuity deviate from that so i just would like to well you definitely well, short Kathy, that you up. were always okay with the tuesday one and tuesday right yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so then so then i guess what you're talking about is the special meeting the special yes. meetings okay all right so we'll, we'll but we'll discuss it at our september meeting which I'm correct to. yes okay yeah all right. thank you for that clarity okay um so reviewing of the interim superintendent's uh, yearly plan. Uh, so you know, Jim had um, come up with some ideas that he had um, shared in different areas, I guess. I know with me, I know, I know Colin, um, he's talked to you about them. So um, I just wanted um, everybody to hear them. Um, and so I'm gonna let Jim kind of talk about what his game plan um for the years and this will this will also be uh stuff that is going to become action items yeah. um it's setting the stage but it's going to become action items for us to kind of decide um are we on board with this a thumbs up or um you know are we well again you know if I, I might and i i believe i've shared this you know through one-on-ones and and you know through some of my communications i, I feel very strongly but i believe i understand in terms of what we're trying to accomplish and and i would put at the top of the list the two things that i heard strongly and i've been reinforced by what i'm picking up is one we need to have higher achievement okay that student achievement is really at the top of the list and i recognize what i'm saying also might parallel with strategic planning but you know that strategic plan as i see that it's going to be your north star it's going to be what columns and major areas that that doesn't mean we shouldn't be working on things already and i feel a charge you know to move us forward as we're you know doing other things to help frame this and to to uh, catapult us you know until where we want to end up so so looking at um student achievement and then behavior you know that that you know that was you know really reported as a significant item I've had uh, some mixed response on that, but overwhelmingly, it's more confirmed than not. Now, I can't tell you that it's across all the schools. It's you know, um, you know, to the same level or whatever else, but it is a priority. Um, and 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 I look at this in a proactive way, not not you know, I turn problems into opportunities. That's the way I would approach this. The one thing that when I went out and I, I've identified that I've met individually and spent an hour to three hours with every principal, every director. I'm starting to meet with community members, you know, uh, teachers as I can. I'm, I'm just really trying to make sure that uh, I'm not just assuming something and I'm trying to validate what I'm hearing because sometimes maybe people say you're just, you're, you're making decisions, anecdotal information. You know, I'm trying to validate, you know, uh, what I'm doing, but I feel pretty strongly that they're, they're one, I have to first say that I'm so impressed with what you have here. You have the capacity to be best in state. There's just no question. You've got so much talent here, um, but we're not getting the results. And so you recognize that that you know, you know, keep doing the same stuff to get the same results, uh, and you get all this talent here. So I feel really energized about this. And as I went out through every principal, I, I I really wanted to promote to the board. Board, I think it's reasonable for you to expect that every elementary school, on a state report card, which is how the public is going to view your success. In many ways, it's not the one that guides us as much as 
you know, interim assessments and data that's collected throughout the year. But then in two years, not this year, but not but the next year, the state report card for, for the second year, every elementary school should be at exceeds expectations. I don't think average is good. You know, I, I mean, I, I think that that has, you, you have to start with the end in mind. So I, I'm really pushing this. And that doesn't mean that this is going to be easy. But I really didn't have any principal that said they, they couldn't do this with getting with their teams. You know, obviously, we're talking about consistency and, and some other things. And the second thing is behavior. I totally support what's happened in this ad hoc group. And, and unfortunately, we haven't uh, maybe merged both efforts, meaning central administration and the ad hoc like we'd like, but it's coming together. Even as it's the last minute, There's there, I think that there's some real energy and, you know, and that can produce that synergy. So, so that that's really, you know, I think progressing too. We we might not have every I dotted and T cross, uh, but there's been substantial work and it's about consistency. And some people might say, I've already got it covered, but it, it's really being part of and recognized as a district level standard of excellence based on, you know, how we come together and can, can celebrate that. So with that in mind, uh, you know, I'm challenging and I would say everything needs to be evidence based and unfortunately sometimes the government even allows you not to be evidence based. They can, you can justify so many of your existing expenditures, you know, but that's, you know, the ESSER funds that we talked about is, you know, some of that now has been dedicated to say, you got to prove that it's on evidence based. So there's, there's still some opportunity out there in terms of how we might use this. But so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm challenging. You know, with your support, I really want you to, uh, if you're feeling comfortable, to endorse this and this, where we're ending up and then expecting that somehow we would work to have uh, every elementary principal and, you know, whether or not it's two at one time, you know, on data, not just to, to uh, feel good presentations, but how are you doing on uh, what you said was, you know, and you're showing us your game plan, your improvement plan, and it makes sense. It looks like you can accomplish this. You can arrive in two years if not sooner. Uh, but that, you know, part of the accountability is visibility, yeah. you know, and, and that we we're talking about enough. And at the same time, I'm challenged with thinking about, you know, how, um, you know, I, you'll hear me often say, why do we want to work to reinvent the wheel? You know, if, if there's proven models out there, um, you know, it goes back to that evidence base. But that's what the ad hoc group did. They didn't start from scratch. They went and looked for good models, and they found good models, and, so, and then they got permission to steal from them. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it wasn't stealing, right? They did get permission. It, it, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so, so I would say sharing, 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 sharing yeah, right? Sharing. And um, um, you know, so yeah, I'm also thinking of making sure that we build into the system something that might challenge us all. You know, to see the significance and in, 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 in the commitment to this and the expectation to this that I'm also thinking about, you know, suggesting to the board to be bold and to take a middle school and an elementary feeder school to that school and, and say, and I, I, you know, I'm aware of a model and there, there's other models out there, but that, you know, one middle school and one elementary school, we're, we're going to ask you to pick something that already works completely you know that that i mean and what i'm saying completely it's not just one school it's it, you you got a number of schools have you know recognizing they're using some platform that has been proven uh, or they come together because there's many different initiatives that have proven to be successful okay i i just had, had experience in one yeah it, it really produced results uh, and so I would really like the board to suggest and, and the parallel to this as you have until, you know, about December, January, where you would have to kind of make a decision, you know, in terms of, okay, you're going to, you're going to go down this path, even you could start right now, if the board feels comfortable in going there to, yeah, let's do that, you know, and, and, and I'm also looking at a, an organizational redesign, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm already talked to my directors, you know, that I have interest in, in restructuring. And, and uh, you know, I'll share that with you right now um, because of some of the feedback that I received, I just think it, it would, uh, I, I think teachers and, and principals and they want to know that we've got skin in the game too. Mm -hmm. This isn't just all, you know, so, so 
Um, you know, I, I'm thinking of signing right now. We have Jason and Cam kind of co-directing activities, and then they split up the schools. But they're always, you know, coordinate, coordination is critical. You've got horizontal or vertical alignment that's really critical. You know, where you need to know where you're going and that you're getting what you need as you're moving um, the curriculum up, and, um, uh, and that you're consistently, you know, horizontal. So I'm suggesting that that uh, Jason would be assigned to secondary schools. And it's his getting in the game. This they they got to be somewhere in two years, and you're going to be part of that success story. You're going to be as accountable and me too, I'm, because I'm suggesting, even though um, I can read about <laughs> your success later on or be part of it, depending on how I fare, you know, in terms of what you, you know, again, I really value what you're doing, and that Pam would be elementary, but I'm also throwing in something else, and that is with the two pilots that I suggested that I would put Joanne responsible for those two pilots to really give them assistance and oversight, you know, but that, okay, you've got an opportunity to demonstrate this might be the best model or a model that the others can learn from, or you're gonna learn from them in terms of that we've actually developed the, 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 the Mandelbach model is the best model that any district could have, but I, you know, so I was just a little hesitant about putting all my eggs in one basket or you, when in fact you could create something here that you have your own research study. Okay, there's all kinds of evidence that these systems work, uh, but I'm not, I'm aware that they're failed also because if they aren't implemented with fidelity, the same thing we would say if we put a plan together and if, if we don't execute it well, right? Mm -hmm. So, so those are some things. And, you know, so I'm, I'm putting this out there because I'm, I'm really proposing this to you. It's just, um, I don't know what your comfort level is with that, uh, but I, you know, I'm starting to discuss this, you know, individually. Uh, I, I just discussed it this week with with my instructional team. I, I think it took everybody back a little bit, but I'm pretty serious about the, my charge. Uh, I think you are. I think the community is. Um, I recognize a lot of people, you know, really recognize how much more we can do. But I would also share with you too that. Yeah, what we do, we, we are horrible at this. We just figure out how to give our teachers and principals a bigger plate. You know, now we're on platter, now we're ready for Thanksgiving dinner, you know, and it's still coming off. You got to figure out how to take some of these, you know, what's coming off of the plate as we're going to, we're going to expect them and encourage them and want them to really rally to this. What do we come off the plate? And let me just throw out something because the, the educational community may not like what I'm saying because it's ingrained in them now, but um, I'm not sure how effective the educator effectiveness system is, which is mandated by the state. You know, you have to pick a model, okay? And so, you know, uh, we have a really good, it's so packed with research, but I'm suggesting these two pilot schools um, that, that we would develop their own evaluation developmental system based on the model they did. And I'm aware that that's happened, you know, with the one that I had, they had the state of Ohio, they made sure that it was meeting. So if you're implementing this correctly, you met the developmental evaluation components. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I think sometimes we're consuming a lot of time and I don't know that it's driving the engine. I want this to be meaningful. So it gives us a way to test whether or not we can break the mold you know, and, and recreate our own from what we might learn in terms of getting into our own action research a little bit. Mm -hmm. So so it's a thought, but I mean just to move, and, but <clears> I need <throat> to make sure that, you know, so I'm throwing this out really as a recommendation, but you have to be comfortable knowing that you're making an informed decision too. I mean, I, you know, I have, you know, years of experience, but I don't have all the answers I do is that we have and we have the people that can make things happen. But I'm again trying to figure out yeah, we can get into our own little research design here. We got good, uh, you know, we got learned, you know, from, from taking these two tracks, what we've always done that we're going to now try to accelerate. And one who jumps on to a proven pathway. And if the pilots, if the pilots work with the middle school and Peter Pro with right, the, elementary. Right, with the system then, um, would we then adopt it across the board or not necessarily because the other schools uh, were doing well, their own one, thing? Well, they, and, and, well here, here, wouldn't it be great, one way or the other, is that the initiative to accelerate our growth and get a hold of behavior, 
you know, it would be great if our model of how we're going to embrace this now and really jump into it um, is proven the best. Mm -hmm. But what happens if it was just the opposite in this proven model uh, where we have, you know, the two schools that are in the pilot are taken off? You know, so I think it's too early to say, but what you do have now is you have you have more opportunity to kind of assess how one initiative might compare to another. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many times have we heard our people say, you know, we're the experts. Mm -hmm. I don't want to take that away. At the same time, I want to make sure that, you know, we're the experts, but we don't have the results we want yet. You know, so, so, so you know, we need to do something differently. The many teachers and staff have come out saying, Behavior is an issue. It's not like it's in every building, and you know, to that same degree. But we got to be known for, whoa, this is a great place for me to send my kids, and I'm really comfortable with it, and um, I like how we engage each other, and everybody's respected. I mean, you know, there's so much involved in this. Uh, I, the one thing I would just say, I couldn't be more excited by the people that I've met here, and what I see as potential and capacity to do so much more. It's just really figuring out. Where we have to make these adjustments and, and i'm just inclined to um get into our own research there you know to the extent that we we now have maybe a parallel that both could win equally mm -hmm. you've got you know two mechanisms or you might find one is the better and we've learned so much mm -hmm. you know but uh, so i think in some ways it could help accelerate us um and, and it gives us evidence to to you know really compare and contrast I want to say um, one or two things. One is that, um, you know, when I look back on um, what our goals were for a previous superintendent, it was achievement and discipline. And then when we um, were getting together to find our interim, you know, two of the things on the list were achievement and discipline. And I think the other thing, you know, when we when we chose Jim um, or when we were at the drawing board, I should say, is we also wanted somebody that wasn't going to be a placeholder, right, but actually had some action items. And so, you know, I think that this, Jim's brought this opportunity to the board um, to do this. And, you know, so personally, I support um, supporting that because I think it checks our boxes off of what we wanted to do and, um, you know, a deadline of to be able to see something. And, and I would also identify, you know, there's more components here, you know, that I, you know, but I've highlighted because they all fit into what I'm talking about. I think we, we, uh, we've done a, a lot of good work to plug the holes, but the, the reading program that we picked many years back is, is not the reading program we need. And, and, and there's gotta be an urgency and it is under, I, I can't tell you exactly what that timeline is, but I also know, you know, for example, on these, this whole school reform model that I'm aware of, and I know that there's others out there, it's built on the foundation of reading, but there's much more. And, and it, it's been proven scientifically that that's okay. Uh, I'm using results. So, so again, there's another component. Okay, are we, you know, I'm getting good feedback in terms of um, the Bridges math curriculum is producing some results. Okay. Um, and I'm hoping the same for literacy, but I'm also seeing, well, we've got two, what we might pick and what has already proven to be successful. You know, but again, it's kind of a pilot, you know, and, and so we're, you know, we would be de determining, you know, that we're going to interject here, you know, to say it's, all this is way too important. There's got to, there's got to be an urgency behind our work. And, and I'm just suggesting a two track approach where I think it helps us really gives us a lot more data in terms of what might be working and not working, you know, as we're moving forward. So, I mean, I, I would be anxious to, to start it right away. I'm, you know, I'm already talking about changing staff in terms of trying to demonstrate I want to get more skin in the game from central office. Yeah. So I like, I like the willingness to get out there charging and, and, and help tackle the issues. Um, we we could talk about it and discuss you know we're, we're doing this we're thinking about this and stuff like that rather than and now it's we're actually having some actionable things to produce better results which is you know we can always improve and that's good um how are we going to track the these feeder uh schools um as far as 
knowing where they're sitting as far as on a performance basis. Is there something that we're well, so see, the, the model that I'm aware of has a model for tracking. Okay. We, we have to make sure that we create the model that's even, you know, much more informative as well for the, for the you know, uh, you know, sometimes I consider it the, the coach's, you know, uh, scorecard, you know, has a lot more detail on it. Uh, but, you know, right along, everybody needs to know that we have a means of monitoring their success. And what I'm suggesting with a pilot, it has a model. Okay. It, it, it identifies priority what you need to do first you need to be tracking how many teachers have mastered this you know and, and so it is well laid out and there are others i'm just aware of one and i would suggest that's what we go with unless they find before they have to make that decision that's that there's one equal to or better to that they might prefer or it's it's four or five notable schools out there that are doing a model you know, the, I mean, but but see what it is is having a network of support back there. Right. And the um, the model um, that Jim is suggesting, it was um, part of a book that um, uh, talked about um, low income. Yeah, social, emotional, the um, importance of, you know, understanding what districts have, have really done this. Right. And, who can and, models. Right. And that, um, you know, when we talk about you know, we always talk about um, part of our achievement issues being possibly due to our demographics and poverty. And so this model was able to elevate that school district right. in this amount of time. It just happens to be the same thing that I had experience right. with that, that, you know, again, it was, um, I had the highest teacher turnover. I had a brand new principal that I was breaking in and we moved uh, the charter school, the K-8 charter school that I had into campuses. Uh, from uh, fails to meet expectations to significantly exceeds in two years. I mean, we had a setback, okay? So we were, before I came, they were into one year. Uh, then unfortunately we lost the $2 million grant and we're closing on a feeder program, Head Start program uh, in those, and then we dropped down to fails. And I had to pick it back up with a significant turnover, but I had the structure, I had the plan. They had the framework and I had training because, you know, it came with training. Uh, so there's significant training, um, you know, so I say sometimes don't reinvent the wheel that it's that there's evidence there. There's best practice evidence that has been proven, but also sometimes that that um, not reinventing the wheel is is the assembly line. How do you put all this together? So the system that I'm talking about doesn't just not only does it have a literacy base, 90 minute reading blocks, because many kids are behind. And in, 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 in the reading blocks are not to keep them there, it's to move them up faster. And it's to concentrate the teacher's time on a smaller gap so they come out going to these reading groups and the, the, the objective is getting to the next highest. And you keep moving this up and you can even think of that for accelerating, okay? Uh, but, the, but there's also, um, and it's all supported by data needs to inform what you're doing. So there's an attendance issue, there's character education in there. There's uh, how are you engaging the parents, uh, yeah, but what's your evidence, you know, in, in terms of the grade level, it's across the schools, across the district. Uh, yeah, it's about how are you engaging the community. The community can support you. It has a committee that's assigned for this school to look at how the community can help. I mean, we're talking about the stuff that's already recognized that this is valuable stuff. But again, you know, uh, uh, that doesn't mean that everybody jumps onto this because, you know, this research was done many years back and some, some of the, and what was really interesting of the three schools that I studied in the book that examined three of them, including the one, and I was studying this, I was already, I didn't select this, it was, I was operating and I was trying to sell it to my donors to get support. Um, but, you know, the model that I have, uh, just some more examples, the, the business roundtable, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the business round, you know, but, you know, organizations like Caterpillar and others would, you know, be part of this. They identified that they were not getting uh, a, a well-educated, you know, um, members into the workforce. And so they hired researchers to say literacy is a problem. They can't even, you know, read, let alone do the critical thinking and and so they, they contracted with um, academic researchers to identify where they should invest and promote. They happened to pick this model that I was using. I got a $50,000 grant from Caterpillar because of what they did. And I'm not sure where it stands now because a lot of that's still working, carrying support to do some things. And so it's been picked by a number of 
institutions trying to promote this. But it's amazing we can know so much and not yet follow models out there. So there's a lot of books that have been written in terms of why don't why doesn't this work? Well, you got any you know, need support from the top. The board needs to be supportive of this, the teacher, and even the one that I had, I think it might be changing, used to say if you don't have 80% of your teachers buying in, you might fail. Because buy-in is important, but now there's even more research that comes out. The best, the best buy-in that you can have is outcomes. You know, the more success you start having, the more synergy, almost everything just starts working better. It's contagious. It's contagious, you know. So, so it, it is, it's challenging sometimes. And because we're hiring professionals, that sometimes we think we have all the answers, you know, but this is interesting. I've read research year after year and sometimes it's packaged, but back 20 years, I was saying, how can we know so much and not accomplish what we're trying to accomplish? Why is that? You know, maybe, you know, sometimes we just continue to add the new thing or to do, you know, and sometimes we're losing. And and and, and I know it's not intended, but sometimes we, we talk about going back to the basics. You know, but we obviously recognize there's advanced placement classes, there's, you know, very rigorous curriculum. It's those basics open the door, and particularly reading, to all the other. So when, when I hear that from the board members, I'm recognizing if you don't have a strong foundation, and if you don't have behavior, the, just the very top, you're not so going to be focused. So, so what you're asking from the board is a blessing to pursue this? I, I would like to. I'm not your permanent, but I still feel it's something that um, could set this district up for success. I think it's setting a high bar. It's giving you some different pathways. Um, I, I think it is a commitment that you're serious about what you're attempting to accomplish with the strategic plan, engaging stakeholders. Um, you know, I would say there's another, I gave you another book that's called Agency. Uh, it's talking about how in the political era arena, we're taking away the student's voice. One side says we're blaming the institutions and all these other things, and we're not we're not doing enough to really help these kids who who might feel attacked. And 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 they're suggesting the right side is saying you just have to pull yourself up from the bootstraps. And this book is saying you're both wrong, and you you you've taken away any incentive for for a student to do or the support mechanisms that need to be in place, like the family. Uh, like the neighborhood, like the institutions that, that have always been there to, you know, to, to help nurture kids and to have them start growing and where they learn their values, church, faith. I mean, you know, so, so I'd like to make a recommendation that we bring this to the full board to um, have them talk about and tell Jim, yay or nay, okay. to go ahead and do it. Minimally, we're, we're going across all boards. I, I just think, you know, it would, I, I think it would be good. Because obviously we don't want him and his staff to spend time on their energy doing this if mm -hmm. the board isn't behind it. So um, a couple of things I would want to see to kind of wrap my my head around up more. Um, is there cost associated? There is. And what kind of costs we're looking at? Um, because those are... You know, I can get costs on the one model, but obviously you choose a different model could be different costs. Correct. There's costs even what we're doing. I guess if I'm on looking, our side, you know, yeah. because we're going to be looking at uh, literacy. Sure. You know, we're going to be looking at a new reading curriculum. You know, I don't Already. know at the time. I so guess, there, there are costs on a number of different fronts here. So that's. Yeah, I guess what I would be wanting to see is what what what, what is the cost associated with the with the changes that we're looking to implement it? That we know of at least. Right. Okay. That obviously, it's a possible sure. cost item. Yep. And that's important because we got a plan for this. Right. And ESSER funds are available because they, in fact, mandate, I think it's, I don't remember it was, if it was 20%, um, you know, that there's a percentage of the funds of ESSER 3s that have to be used on evidence. You know, that's what they're trying to get boards to do mm -hmm. is to don't reinvent the wheel. Um, another one I would want to see is, I guess, um, you know, it's some sort of, I, I'm, I tend to be somewhat visual, some sort of thing to, you know, what it is the plan. And I know we had some of that in the, in the email that you had put out there, um, the changes that you're, you're looking to implement uh, as well. I mean, for the most part, what I did read, um, it sounded great. I, I mean, I, I liked the, and the initiative sounds awesome. 
um, and even in some of the details that we discussed, I'm on board. But I, I yeah, the, the cost is one of the biggest ones that I would like to see. Kind of if we could get a couple more details about what it is that, you know. And the other thing that I would add to that is which is harder to do. It's, it's what some people in the business would understand as opportunity cost. That's a cost of not doing things that you need to do. Right. Yeah. I mean, so so you always have to weigh what's the cost of where we're at right now academically. Mm -hmm. right. right. What's the cost of that? Um, you know. Um, you know. So, but I. You know, I am I am very much a uh, fiscal conservative. Yeah. yeah. You know, stronger. There's no free lunch. Somebody's paying for this. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and and for me, it's always what's the return on investment. I mean, I you know, so. We gotta um, do something. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, where I'm at, I, I love the discussion here, guys, and I'd love to see more uh, uh, details on the evidence that you talked about because I think that'll help us get more of the community yeah. on board. Uh, but I, I think it's a great idea, and uh, I'm definitely supportive of improving achievement. Right? I think every, who's who's against that, right? So, um, you know, I love the proactiveness, and thank you for bringing it to the group. I think. Uh, I publicly right now, Matthew Phipps, I support your judgment at this point from your, what you've proven to me already from your decisions and your operating um, publicly and privately. So uh, I've been in complete support of, of your guidance and that's why we hired a superintendent uh, interim. So I think we, uh, our literacy is, is, is my biggest thing <coughs> and I, I know that uh, you open up the doors of opportunity when you can read. And I know our literacy is not very good right now. You can have the best teachers in the world that be given the wrong curriculum. You know, we're encouraging them to teach what they've been given. I mean, so, so all there's so much that's packed in here. You know, this is a professional organization. You know, this is a profession. You know, and we've Asian already and we've already established that, right? We've already established that what we had picked a few years ago was not what we. And we're aware of that. We yeah. plugged holes. I mean, so it's not like, right. you know, but it's, you know, for three years back, people have been jumping ship. And we're already looking at a new um, right. curriculum anyway. Right. Okay. So this would be an opportunity okay. to do something across the board. So I'll make a motion that, uh, it, actually, I think you already have a motion mm -hmm. on the, so I'll second your motion then if, the, if that's what you're seeking to bring this to the, the full, full board, board for, uh, uh, presentation and approval. And when are we looking to do that? And this not special next week or the regular on what I'd like to do be is even to share what I propose to the board uh, with all staff on Monday. You know, I'm you know, I'm kind of an open book. I mean, this is already public knowledge in terms of what I'm, you know, recommending. And and while I still need, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, our professionals and and staff need to know. What we're considering, um, you know, uh, and already just by your support, I, I feel comfortable, you know, starting to share even as early as on Monday when all staff come back. And I've, I've talked with my directors in terms of some of the restructuring I want to take. They, they're, they're still in very critical roles. But again, I, I, I think I need to make sure that we have skin in the game. Everybody's got skin in the game. I think timing is crucial because of the school year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a great opportunity and I don't want to let it go by. So I think we did our due diligence three months ago to put ourselves in a position of success. Mm -hmm. I think this is how we do it. So to act now, I think it's, it's, it's paramount. Let's let's do fit two things. Let's vote on the motion first that we bring this to uh, the full board for approval. And then, um, so we have a motion, a second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. And then, um, then the second piece is when do we want Jim to be prepared to present this to at least the board? So Which I have three things. Possible to be prepared for Tuesday. <clears throat> yeah, well, well, given I, what we've asked when we get though, I mean. He's got the room now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know that I've already shared the information with you. Uh, yeah, I'm also but if you want the money, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, good, that's, yeah. you know, right now I, I know, um, you know, so 
you know, probably my preference would be the regular board meeting in, in, in September. Okay. So, oh, but but I see I already have, you know, your support to yeah. proceed, you know, and I can start sharing that that doesn't mean it's a done deal. Right. Yeah. And then I would say then on I mean, uh, I, on I'm Monday, feeling empowered, you know, to um you know you know to to move us, you know, to raise the bar. I think you should. Yeah. Feel that way. And, and again, I say that with with knowing what we have. You know, you you've got some of the best people uh, around. You know, uh, I don't have all the answers in terms of why we're where we're at. I'm just impressed with what we have. But there's so much more to do. And I mean, it's it's not just we talked earlier facilities and and are we getting enough revenue? You know, in terms of how we compare to. Whoever we're competing with, <clears throat> I, I want us to be best in the state because you have that you have that capacity. I mean, I'm really excited with everything that I've seen, and yet transitions can be really difficult. And I'm trying to work with the board too. We've got things that are distracting. We're not on. We're you know we lost our focus, mm -hmm. and we need to get that back. What you really hired me for, you know, even though I recognize that there's other issues there, and we've talked about those things. Um, the more we put that on the success of that student outcome, the more we're going to have everybody coming to board. And, and I really believe we can do this. And, and uh, you know, but there are risks. I, I wouldn't say that there isn't. You know, everything comes down to you can have a good plan, but if you don't execute it. Right. right. And you got to have the right people, you know, in the right spots. You know, we can do the good, great. You know, I mean, I, right. tell me what book you want me to reference. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll yes. make you. Could you just repeat the motion that you made? You made a motion to bring yes to bring Jim's plan to the full board what, for approval. Okay, his the the entire plan or just this pilot plan? Um, I think it's all the same. It's it's all kind of all the same. It okay. fits in the pilot is really the unique stuff. Otherwise, you know, I'm. You know, yeah. But I but I have identified part of that plan as a commitment that we're going to where the expectation is we believe that our that our buildings can have it's, that type it's, of it's, the, it's it's his plan that he has to um, meet the objectives of discipline and uh, academic for. achievement. And with that, one of the details is the pilot. But the whole overarching is is he's being tasked with the objective of coming up with a plan for that, and so he's going to present that. Yeah. So um, the other part that you were asking, um, so I'll make a motion. It sounded like the preferred time would be the <coughs> general meeting in September. So I'll make a motion that we. Well, I don't think we need do to. We, we don't need to. Pray. I don't think so. so just, I, I think just so he knows that we okay. already know we're going to bring it, but we're going to bring it to the general okay. on agenda. Awesome. Yeah. Anything else, Lori? Thanks. So. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And then just the last thing um, was the strategic plan um, update scheduling. Um, and Jim was just going to um, really the, the surveys are due today. So I hope everybody got a chance to do those. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And, uh, Kathy, I'm looking at you. You do your teacher. That's right. Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> is anyone? Yeah. So, um, and then that my my understanding is that um, data this will be that on the agenda next 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 Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. So we'll get that. Um, that's why the results, results are. So he'll be working to get another <laughs> update, and that could be information, discussion, and potential action. If there's something that you felt you had to, because it's again continuing to take it to the next group and the next group. You know, kind of building that momentum as well as that understanding. Do we have an idea of an expectation of when those one-on-ones with uh, Brett is going to take place? I, I don't, you know, and I don't know if he suggested something to me. I'm a little behind my email, but uh, yeah. um, I, I, I don't. I yeah, don't know if you picked up anything. No. Okay. So, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be um, checking in with him. He did, though, him. take uh, Carrie's suggestion, which I thought was good. Um, and uh, so one of the things right now that Jim is working on is that those data sheets that, um, you know, because, you know, there's sort of like the 
don't want to say a rumor, but you know, it's like we have these things that we keep talking about, right? And and but we need data behind it. We need we haven't framed kind of where we're at and what we're attempting to to get our arms around the, you know, the strategic plan. So we, right. we know academics are there, but you know. So Jim and Brett and Angela, and it's coming from lots of different sources, or you're going to see graphs and stuff of data that they've come up with that is going to, um, you know, just kind of helps frame it really. Right. Visually frame. Is this where we want to be? I mean, one of them is a quadrant in terms of how much revenue are you getting in uh, relative to how much academic, you know, you've achieved. And, and we're in the bottom left quadrant, meaning we're in the low level of revenue and low level of achievement. Now, but it will show us how we compare it to others in, in, in a range, um, you know, from let's say 3,000 students, you know, to we had it to the top, but we think that data might be skewed by uh, some of the urban centers, which, you know, may be a whole different way to look in terms of who you're, you know, trying to compete with, you know, um, you know, so, so we might, you know, narrow it down. So we're into kind of refinement stages of, of some of this information. And then again, Brett would be identifying how we might be able to use this in some of our subsequent. Right. So this not this is data not just for us. This is going to be for the community. This is going to be for um, teachers. Even everyone though it'll help, it will help us in our budget, you know, and kind of everything. You know, I, I I think what we're missing sometimes is being able to to frame our discussion, you know, with some big data, and then how that brings us down into a deeper understanding about my we root causes of certain things you know but you know if you don't have that understanding and we have the data it's just now going to be packaged in a way that's very clear that we can all see and and we can disseminate very good it's so, exciting yeah so um uh yeah so great so we'll have uh that coming up um next week and brett will meet with us as well and i think that was the end of our Agenda. Agenda, that is correct. Okay. All right. We'll do a motion to adjourn. Motion. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Meeting ended. Awesome. Awesome. Well, and exciting. Yes. Okay. So we're seeking approval. Okay. Okay. But we want that approval to be a strong message. Yeah. So that was one.